Hello and welcome! These are horse racing selections for Thursday the 15th of December and darts bets for the PDC World Darts Championship which championship championship which starts on Thursday evening. All right, I am Flat Cap Callum and I'm hoping you are all very very well. Uh, I've got mildly festive attire on today. It's the first time I've gone to anywhere where Christmas jumper was uh, was was asked for, and uh, I just kept it on. I'll be honest, and uh, yeah, just just try and get in the little festive spirit. Um, the weather is certainly uh, festive. Um, it's, uh, it feels like Christmas Day because there's virtually no racing going on. Um, but we make do with what we've got. So coming up on the vid, we've got. One bet again for Thursday, and this time I've only got three horses. So Wednesday we had five, one was a non-runner. Thursday I've just got three, uh, three horses. So it's one each way Trixie um, with singles on the three of them. Um, so I'm, I've slightly lowered the risk value, and I'll come back to that uh, for tomorrow. Before we do that, we'll do the review of yesterday. After we've done the uh, um, horse racing, we'll then get in to... The darts. So, I'm forgetting what I'm actually doing here. The darts, yes. So, uh, yeah, it, it sounds like in the comments there's quite a few people interested in darts, which is grand. So, hopefully, I've got some decent enough bets. As I explained yesterday, the darts bets aren't ones I'm going to record on the statistics because they are bookmaker specific bets. Um, so, yeah, so they are recommended, uh, and therefore, as they're recommended, I'm not putting a stake to it. Um, so it's up to you what you kind of what you do with it, but it's not something that the channel is going to record. And just want to be super super clear with that one. So whether or not it's a gigantic win or it's all just a loss, the channel is not recording any of the darts for statistic purposes, purely because I'm going to advise specific bets with specific bookmakers. All right, and then when I've done that, I'm also going to go through the schedule for Christmas next couple of weeks because I'll be on an operating a slightly different schedule to the usual Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday evening, Saturday, Sunday morning schedule. Okay, right, Wednesday, we just about got it back in the end, but only if you got the bet on early enough, because a lot of these did start shortening up, even after I put the video last night, um, May Song did start shortening up quite quickly, so I'm conscious that um, I don't imagine many people will, will have quite made the, the channel return, albeit we're not talking about a life-changing sum, so I got it as 10 on 9.36 back, so I imagine most people hopefully would have got somewhere around the eight nine pound mark back um we'll see um so what do we have first leg uh non-runner disappointing then this got backed into 11 to 2 so i said it was the price crasher potential of, of the four um they all well three of them went in actually out of four that that ran uh, that was a significant move 11 to 2 but it just ran no sort of race at all really it was really disappointing indiana gray was the one that didn't come in in price went from the front and then faded so it wasn't looking so hot but then Kodiak Prince was a very solid third after being backed in and then May Song again was well well backed in um, and uh, from an SP point of view and that finished uh, second at nine to one so two places on this is a place double so if you'd done it after Bobby and the Beat came out and you got the short prices you wouldn't have got much in the way of return um, comparable uh, for most of you got it on before the, the non-runner came out. It should have done okay for the place double. Uh, and unfortunately, because Desert Boots went down, we didn't get anything on the additional double. So, started our week with a couple of places, a couple of knots. So, you know, it's all right, but most of them were backed in. Um, and there has been a few um, a few comments recently about the horses getting backed in. And, you know, the, the Ten a penny, there's, there's places where people will tell you they've got the winner. I don't think there is many other places that will tell you this horse is going to get backed in. Um, and I want to be really clear, I'm not using anything clever like software or you know, I'm, not, I'm not doing that based off Betfair Exchange. I'm just doing that off my own knowledge of reading the betting market and reading the form. I've done it long enough. I can see when there are potential price crashes. I don't get it all right all the time. But I get it right most of the time with that kind of stuff. Um, clearly, <laughs> don't get it right most of the time in terms of winners. But that's not what I'm trying to do, is it? Um, so most of you get this. It's a long-term game and it is about value and trying to find value. And the key thing with value is either you've got to try and find a horse that you know will be a shorter SP than what it is when you're looking at the selection. Because there is value within that price. Or you're going a stage further and you're going, based on everything I'm reading... 
I know the, short, the price isn't going to shorten up, but I still think it's overpriced based on where it should be. Um, and, there's, you know, I've answered questions on this before in the comments. And there's, I'm, I'm projecting out like a whole bunch of selections, but some, there's some of them, and I don't go into all the details sometimes, but I'm picking them for different reasons. And some, like, yes, like Desert Boots, it, it felt like a price crasher to me. Um, so, yeah. That's uh, that was yesterday. Um, so this is already really too long. I was trying to speed up. Sorry. Um, okay, Thursday bet. This is Thursday bet. This is what it is. Um, three horses. I, I, I looked for a four horse, and it, there wasn't any much. There wasn't anything in at price, and I wasn't going to wedge in. And all of the courses tomorrow all have some level of, of doubt or inspection on them. So I've, I've kind of reduced the the risk factor by doing more of the stake on singles. So if there are abandonments um rather than sort of it being left on the on what's left you'll get more of a refund so it's a lower risk really this way of doing it uh, but it just sort of feels like the right thing to do in the next couple of days 145 foss lass uh, could be the first jumps race uh, meeting of the week but we'll see to be sure is the horse 16 to 1 then we've got 303 at southwell kapler blue 14s the 505 southwell coaxing at 12s so it's 25p each way Trixie, so each way doubles and treble, and then 50p each way singles on all three. So we've got 40% of the money going on to the multiple and 60% on the singles. And as most of you are very familiar with, normally we have got no more than 10% going on to singles, really, um, in terms of what I, what I try and do on, on the channel. So yeah, we're going slightly, we're not, it's not low risk, it's probably more medium risk. But that doesn't mean there's any better chance or worse chance of, of winning or not. If we get all three of those up at those prices, you got a grand in your pocket. So you'll be happy, wouldn't you? But that's a big if. We'll see. Um, so that is the bet for tomorrow. Um, and then, yeah, the outlook for the week, the week is still still in doubt. Ascot's already gone for Friday. We'll have to see if we've got Ascot or Haydock on, on the weekend. We might just be down to a bit of all weather. Um, the Punchestown meeting that would have been on last weekend, it was a good one's move to Monday. Um, so yeah we'll see on that one and actually I'll, I'll just list, I'll do the schedule now actually um, as I'm talking about videos and horse racing so this I'll, and I'll put this up on other days this is the schedule for next week um, so normal video Saturday Sunday and then we've got an additional video Monday morning so I normally don't do videos Monday so I've got two videos Monday I'm going to do an AM Monday video for Monday racing and a an Monday PM video for Tuesday racing. So two additional videos next week on Monday. Then we've got Tuesday and Wednesday night like normal. And then no videos for four days because there is three days where there is no racing. So I've got 21st video for Thursday racing and then there is no racing in UK or Ireland on Friday, Saturday or Sunday. That's the 23rd, 24th, 25th. And then this is Bonanza Week. This is where we will be having a right good go, I should imagine, at least one or two of those days. It's busy, busy, busy stuff all through the week. There's Limerick and Leopardstown in Ireland. We've got Kempton a couple of days, Monday, Tuesday. We've got the Welsh Grand National on Tuesday. Um, and then it builds in into the Friday, which is the quiet one. And then the weekend is, a really, is, is, is pretty good. So New Year's Eve is pretty good. And then New Year's Day is always a busy day. Um, and then literally it just drops back down to normal after that. So for the, for the second week of Christmas, the key thing to flag here is I'll be doing AM videos every day to try and, and, and cram in as much as I can so I can use the evening, um, more of the evening to get the research done because they're going to be likely to be busy days and higher state than average days. Um, so we, we could well find um, possibly, well, so I would certainly imagine the Monday, Tuesday uh, and possibly Wednesday, Thursday are going to be definitely above normal stake on those. Um, so that is the projection. So Boxing Day morning, then 27th morning, 28th morning, 29th morning. And then it'll be a Thursday night video for the Friday selections, which I said is the quiet one. And then the weekend as usual. That is the Christmas schedule. And now I'll get to the darts. So if you want the darts, stay on the line. If you don't want the darts... Have a good one, and I'll see you Thursday night for Friday selections. So, darts. Um, two things I'm going to go through, um, as I mentioned yesterday. One is the Sky Bet only outright market. Uh, a couple of people have very helpfully flagged Bet Fret are also um, going four places um, in the outright market. I would not advise doing a bet on the darts championship in the standard market with the amount of players. 
So you've got, I think it's 96 at this stage, paying two places. That is just terrible, terrible odds. If you look at the history of, of, of PDC darts, you generally find in the last kind of two, maybe four places, there's always m- mostly favourites. You, you do get a few ones at a bigger price to sneak into the semi-finals, very occasionally in the final, um, but you generally find they are there are low price winners. Um, so, yeah, the outright market um, is just not. I just don't think it's worth a bet. I think it makes it just about worth a bet with Skybet and Betfred. But one of the prices I've got is a very Skybet specific. So, I'm only advising these ones in the Skybet only market and the top two Betfred. Um, so outright market four places. So I'm walking past the shorties at the top of the market and I'm looking at who is a bit of value here based on form, slight pedigree um, to actually make it into a, to a semi-final place at the, uh, uh, to get some place money, but then also possibly chance of winning. So Nathan Aspinall is, is kind of a number one there for value. Um, 33 is I think it's a good price. He's in a good part of the draw. Um, so yeah, a nice run f- from him. Um, he goes a little bit in and out of form, but a nice run. I think that's a, it's a decent enough price to have a little go in the outright market. Rob Cross, former winner. Um, he, he, he again is a bit in and out, but 28 is a really, really good price. Those are the same prices on Betfred as they are on Skybet tonight. Um, so they are worth it. But as I'm saying, four places only. If you're betting with anyone else, I would not advise these in the outright market for two places. Doesn't mean they're not going to win or runner up, but from a value perspective, it's borderline the four place market. Then the the other one that is Skybet only that I think is a really, really good price. I say it's a really good price, there is a bunch of value in it. Most places, Stephen Bunting is around 100, 150 to 1 for top two. Skybet, 300 to 1, top four. So that price is not replicated on Betfred. On Betfred, is 150. I'm not looking at that. I'm only looking at Skybet, 300 to 1. That is a really, really decent price for a guy who, when he's on song, he's cracking. He absolutely bangs in some big scores. He has previously had done some decent stuff. He's won the BDO World Championship once before, and he's made it to semi-finals once before um, of the PDC a couple of years ago. So 300. He's not been in the best form this year, and that's why the price is, is there. But that that isn't isn't right to me at all. I, I would say he should be about 80 to 91 in the overall market. So there is a little bit of value elsewhere, but for Skybet, 300 to 1, four places, that's worth a little go. So that is my outright market recommendations. And then this is my recommended, I've, I've got it down to a lucky 31. Um, so this is Paddy Power and Betfair only, and it's the section betting. So I talked about this last night. A lot of bookmakers do the quarter betting. Not all of them will allow you to do a multiple. The challenge with doing um, quarter betting is basically you're saying which four people are going to come to the semi, get to the semi-finals and do a lucky 15. You're almost guaranteed, if you look at the history, that someone like a Van Gerwen or a Price, who is much, much shorter price, is going to get in there. So if you go with four big prices, it's almost not impossible to believe that all of those good players are just going to get knocked out in the same tournament. Albeit, I think it's one of the most open we've had for a long time. So I don't. It's it, it, it's worth maybe looking at maybe like trying to find a double of, of a couple of quarters that you might like. But I wouldn't recommend doing much in lucky fifteens unless you're looking at people like I've mentioned, like Aspinall eight to one is probably a reasonable price. Um, someone like Luke Humphrey seven to two is not bad for a quarters bet. But but overall, I'm not doing the quarters. I'm doing the section betting on Paddy Power and Betfair, and I've gone for the five sections I think are most open. To, you, to put together this bet um, and I'm, I'm having a crack at some prices as you might imagine because that's just what I'm about so section 2 on here we're going Bo Greaves so if you're not familiar with Bo Greaves she is the new wonder kid of darts she she looks like she could be the best female darts player of all time and she, she's only 18 she's got a bag of potential um, the biggie question mark is can she put it together on the big stage is she going to get a bunch of nerves or is she going to go up there and just go i'm going to crack it she's got a really really good opportunity in the first round draw i think in terms of she's drawn o'connor i think that's a that's a really interesting draw and for those of you who like doing little accumulators on on matches bo greaves in the first round 
it's not the best price, but about two to one that I've looked at. It's worth putting in an, in an accumulator if you like that. But yeah, basically we're saying, can she get to the quarterfinals 25 to one? Um, she's just a bit of an unknown quantity. So I think it's worth taking a punt there for the lucky 31. The bigger price one I'm going for a punt on is Nathan Rafferty, section three. Um, he he looks like he, he he could be a new a new starlet coming into the scene. You never quite know. There's a bunch of play, players that come onto the scene. Like last year, you had Willie Borland do at nine dart finish in the first round to win the match, and then he's not he's not qualified this year. But Nathan Rafferty, he, he looks like he's got a lot of potential. Forty to one is a really good price. It's a competitive section of the draw. It has to be said. Um, and certainly, if you're looking at first round match, I think he's again he's got a decent chance. He's six to four to win his first round match. Then when you get a little bit deeper, he's got a few more challenging matches to get to. But I think forties was worth it. I've mentioned Stephen Bunting. Um, he's a bit of a favourite of mine. Uh, I backed him a few times. I backed him when he won the BDO World Darts Championship. Thirteen to two is on the edge of this bet of, of being value, but I've left it in. I was I'm in an arm and doing a would I do a lucky fifteen without him, but. In his bit of the draw, it's it's. I think it's really open, um, and he's going to have some tough matches. So we'll see how we go on there. Then we're going uh, section six. Uh, Nathan Aspinall, as mentioned, nine to two. I think it's a good solid one to have in there at a short price. And then I'm finishing off section eight. Ryan Joyce, fourteen to one. It's kind of a medium price, but for this bet, again, open side of the draw, um, and I think that's worth it. So lucky thirty one recommended that you can only do this bet with Paddy Power or Betfair and those are the current prices so it's a win one so it's literally these players are the ones that are going to come to into the quarterfinals that's what they've got to do um, so yeah I'll, rec- I'll put it out there and then what we'll do I'll do is as the videos go through in the next few weeks because we have a they have a break for the PDCA of Christmas I'll update progress kind of each day if any players are playing and see how we get on all right that was it. If you like it, take it. If you don't, don't. Um, you know, from a stake point of view, you know, if you were keeping in with with like channel state, you'd probably put it down as like a thirty p win, lucky fifteen. If you were in line with channel state, that kind of stuff. Um, but it's entirely up to you. All right, that is me. Thank you very much. Um, I will see you Thursday night uh, for Friday selections, and it will just be back to the horses. There won't be any uh, won't be any darts. All right, thank you very much. Bye bye.